Welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. This is 126 with Vaibhav Tiwari. Vaibhav is the founder and CEO of BuildPan, a platform that helps companies developing iOS and Android applications to continuously build, develop, and get user feedback. I wanted to bring him on because I have experience in building Android and iOS uh, applications with uh, uh, with my company from before, and it was a freaking headache. There was I, I literally knew nothing about development when I started the company, and so I had to learn so much about it, and so I'm hoping that there's something I can learn from him today uh, so that if I get the courage to do it again another time, uh, I can do it smarter, and hopefully you can learn from this episode as well uh, to figure out how you can do work better, and maybe you'll find value in using BuildPan yourself. So thank you for taking the time to talk with me, Vaibhav. I appreciate it. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit more about uh, your backstory and how you got to start BuildPan, and we'll go from there. I did my engineering back in 2005. Then I completed my master's in business administration, and I was working as a business analyst for some tech companies. So while working there, we were working on a lot of mobile application projects, a lot of mobile applications, and while working for various mobile applications, we realized, I realized that there is a gap in mobile application development industries where developers usually struggle in creating the application, testing it, and to the deployment process. So the whole process, uh, the developers need to struggle a lot. They need to get the feedback from the QA team. They need to get feedback from the project management team. And it takes a hell lot of time. So we have observed that it takes approximately 10 to 15 plus an iterations for a mobile app to come down in the market. And it takes approximately 30 to 45 days for an update to go down, to come down in the market. And because of the cutthroat of uh, competition, we wanted something which can publish with a product which can publish the applications faster and down in the market. So we thought that if we can make a product where, so the already existing tools which are there in the market, they're either working for Android, they are or, or working for iOS, no such platform which can solve all the problems at one single place. So we thought that if we can make a platform where everything is available at one single place, uh, where developers can make applications starting from scratch and they deploy it directly on the app store, then it would be a huge hit. So, spending a lot of weekends, uh, eating a lot of developers' brains. We, pro we we created an MVP and we have shown it to a couple of people, um, some of the people, some of the clients that we've been working with, and they appreciated it. And we finally created a prototype and submitted it to, to the market that let's check how the response will come. And the response was good. And that's how we created it. So you bootstrapped the MVP. And then did you try to go uh, to profit with that? Or did you try to raise funds from there? What was your concept for how to build a company next? We bootstrapped it first initially because uh, uh, three years back, uh, people, I mean, startups craze was there, but uh, people were not actively, people were not actively believing uh, in the process on the companies that are coming up. Uh, we we had we i mean the team the backend team i had 10 plus years of experience my founder other co-founder viren has 15 plus years of experience we bring a lot of experience to the table but still um, it takes some amount of time it um, i mean i believe i mean when speaking to a lot of investors if you don't put your stakes in people won't believe you so we bootstrapped it we started it we, we put um, a lot of savings into it and then we started it um after after three months of good response from a lot of people we thought that this is something that can be a huge hit that this is something that uh, i mean uh, when when our baby started crawling so during that time we spoke to a couple of investors it's it was more of a friends and family round where we spoken to a couple of angel investors um we we've given demos to some of the conferences which were going on in in india specifically and there uh, we met some like-minded people who believe in the project and uh, during that time we raised, uh, raised a very small amount 100k which was 
enough for us for 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 survive for, for surviving approximately 6 months and uh, then we 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 met a lot of people those investors um introduce us to their friends and um, after 6 months uh, we we i mean we raised another round of 500k so i mean the journey has been really good and uh, really i mean it it's been really good and how much did you raise today so we raised three rounds um, the one that i told you 100k then we raised 500k and recently last year i mean last year we raised 2 million us dollars uh, uh, last year and we we raised we are raising another 5 million us dollar in this round for which we got some soft commitments and let's see how things goes So how do you handle your internal operations segregation of duties uh do you have a global workforce you know how are you handling that So from the very first day I I mean from from couple of experiences of our friends also uh we decided and we segregated our duties properly I mean I handle after the investor relationships new pitch deck new investor relationships managing and also sales and marketing So these are some of the roles and responsibilities that I usually cover. Virend and Anthony look after the tech part, so they have again divided themselves. Android, Virend looks after iOS. Anthony looks after, and um, Sonal she looks after all the finances. So uh, we have divided all our duties, segregated. Uh, we keep uh, a day every every Monday. we speak to each other i mean we usually speak to uh, each other on every every single day when when we are in office but we keep a me- weekly meeting that these are the tasks that everyone is working upon i am working upon we have created uh, some work report format i believe that um, uh, work reports are something which is not specifically um, only or uh, something which is only for employees it should be for the founders as well because everyone knows that what that other person is working upon and if if everyone knows and or if everyone has the track that this are the works and roles and responsibility other person is dealing with with then uh, the chances of um, uh, issues usually are very less so we we and mostly our team is in india i mean and specifically during this time i mean uh, um everyone is working from office there are cu- couple of people who are working from home but um, since everyone is in india so working and managing team is little bit easy you've also uh, been in singapore i believe right you've you've been in a few other countries we had quartered built pan in singapore so um, initially we started in india but um, when when we started globally when we got lot of global clients and when we got lot of investors from us from shanghai then um, there was um, there was um, an opinion that we should establish ourselves outside india because it would be easy it would be a global global presence and people would be easy to uh, i mean it would be easier for people to have a due diligence and put money in the in in your product so we been to singapore um, uh, we we attend lot of events we attend lot of i have been recently to jitex dubai so i mean it was uh, uh, my i mean first first uh, um, first event outside india when we started build pan i've been to a uh, couple of events when i was working with some other companies but um, i mean when we started it was i mean uh, we we started in december 2019 and uh, january was the time 2020 when covid hit uh, all over the world and people were working virtually so yeah it was uh, i mean initially we used to go that this is what uh, my company was working upon but now i have uh, i mean i had a different feeling altogether because i go and that this is my product this is what i am working upon this is this would be something really interesting if you can how long after it was recommended to you to establish yourself outside of india did you finally do it and how did it feel you know was there a difference did you feel like your business was different in any way or you were becoming different in any way as a result of this kind of uh, change when we started after 6 months we established ourselves outside india uh, specifically talking about investor point in investor point of view uh, uh, there was a change uh, because um, 
when you tell people that um, you you you're not based in, i mean you're based in india but you have headquarter yourself outside india then there is um, a change um, specifically um, the uh, taking money i mean investing in india is little difficult because because of uh, some of the government norms uh, people people do find difficult in investing in india and in singapore it's quite easy because uh, the process and the business uh, why is they they've set up themselves um, so it's it's comparatively very easy so there were a lot of companies and there were a lot of investors initially when we speaking with they were not able to put money but uh, when we started when we established ourselves in singapore it was comparatively easier my startup is in singapore as well and one of the reasons we chose it was because you know i had been living in china and vietnam and my partners were in philippines and malaysia and none of those countries really just made investors feel comfortable so we uh, we thought singapore would be a really good place to be and it worked out for sure when i recently visited to jitex um, uh, even dubai is um, promoting themselves as good business friendly country uh, they have also eased their norms and uh, they were also trying to speak to a lot of people i mean there was a good big booth where they were trying to tell people that it would be good if you can come and establish a headquarter i've met a lot of people who are either they've moved to dubai or they're in the process of moving to dubai or they want to move to dubai and i just don't see the charm like if you're not if you're making less than a quarter million dollars a year personally like i don't see how you could survive there and and i, I a lot of startup founders i know are not bringing home a quarter million a year true absolutely so uh, one of one of our friend um, he's working on a blockchain technology he recently moved to dubai and he was very much uh, posting us that it would be good if you also if you guys also move in it's it's a great place and everything but um, i still believe um, uh, i mean uh, working in india is comparatively cheaper uh, the workforce the workforce is little cheaper um, though after covid attrition is one of the thing that a uh, lot of startups are fighting with Uh, people are really getting a good amount of money good amount of packages from all over the country and uh, they don't need to move their assets to another place they can sit at home and uh, work yeah i mean the woman i was working with she was living with her parents she was uh you know doing quite well and did basically didn't have much cost so you know when when you're especially when you're working with a non domestic like if you're working with a with like for example i'm not indian right and hired an indian so like i am a, a foreign company right i i represent a foreign company and so when you have access to salaries in dollars like that then um you know it makes sense to live in the cheapest place as possible i mean i was living in in vietnam for years and like i was living an upper class lifestyle for like $1200 a month <laughs> right <laughs> i can totally understand i can totally understand i believe uh, if, if you're in india uh, that the it it would be similar here i mean 1200 dollars would be an upper class lifestyle but now living in portugal i'm living a like a middle class lifestyle for 2500 oh mm and somehow Portuguese people are making 800 euros a month and they're they're making it work but I don't know how <laughs> like I I see all these countries like in Vietnam they're like yeah we make like $300 a month how are you surviving like I can't live for under a thousand in Vietnam ah uh, that's they're like it's 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 totally people's choice there are people who are very much happy in less so I believe that is one of the thing Yeah, I I think the thing for me is the quality of the housing. That's right. Because I spend most of my day at home. Mhm. You know, working from home or if not I'm in a cafe or something. So I want to be somewhere that's clean and comfortable and somewhere that I I it should give some really good vibes. Right. You got to pay for that. <laughs> Absolutely, you have to. I mean specifically, uh, I mean uh, a, a little off the topic Uh, after covid um, uh, the housing um, rates in india are totally increasing because 
there are a lot of people who are working from home and everyone wanted a home for themselves a cozy home so that is one of the thing that i've i've been reading constantly that uh, the housing rates and the interiors have been on a rise from quite a some time yes i've seen this all over the world so i want to go a little bit more into the tech so what is continuous development initially what happens is um, i mean if you want to make a single change in the code you have to rewrite the whole code specifically that part and you have to deploy the full application but in case of continuous deployment or continuous de- development the process is very simple you need to put that particular piece of code in the existing running application and you can change that particular line and deploy it directly on the app store so uh, the process where you have to rewrite the whole thing all you have to do is you have to change that particular line and you can deploy it directly on the platform or you can directly deploy on the app store so that is what a continuous development is what is continuous build how are how are these two things different continuous build or continuous integration integration initially what people used to do is they used to write the complete application or complete code deploy i mean they compile the whole code and then it goes to the app store now what happens is you can make small changes and deploy directly on the app store you don't need the whole code a continuous integration or continuous deployment process is something where you can make changes in the live code and deploy directly on the app store when you're trying to use something like ci cd scripts sorry for everyone continuous development slash continuous integration scripts um what are the chances of having bugs and how do you prevent those bugs from getting in that is one of the thing that we have done in build pack so uh, while the continuous integration process goes on uh, build pan also check that uh, your code is following the latest apple google apple or google policies or not if your code is not following those build pan will give you an intimation that your code is not following apple or google policies and there might be a chances that your app might be rejected on the app store along with it uh, with build pan while you push your code to build pan build pan scans your whole code if there are any bugs any issue or any error come a auto report is generated from build pan end this also happens to be the usp of build pan where it finds all the bugs all the issues all the errors which are there in the code it will give you a report a bug report so consider for an example that your code is failed on line 10th 11th or 12th a auto report is generated from build pan end that your code has been failed on these particular lines along with it it will also give you auto suggestions that your code is failed because you are using an outdated facebook library consider for an example an outdated facebook library or outdated sdk so along with providing auto bug reports build pan also provide you auto feedback or auto suggestions which help developers to rectify their solutions by themselves so they actually don't need to go or they don't need for the qa teams feedback it can be done through build pan so where does the ai come into all of this we have written a lot of test cases at the backend where what happens is build pan checks all the code on the basis of the test cases that we have written and the machine at the backend is training on the basis of the those test cases that are written at the backend that uh these are normally these are the issues which usually happens in this particular type of application so um our machine is training on the basis of the test cases that have been written and it tries to detect those errors or those issues by itself so it's not trained completely but still in the, it's in the process how do you think chat gpt is going to affect your the landscape of your business speaking i'm not much aware about the process but uh, i'm more concerned um, not more but a little bit concerned about the no code softwares which are coming in the market right now because it's more on the drag and drop feature where people are able to create the applications or create um, website on the basis of that so uh, they can be a huge competition uh, but i still believe i mean um, a ready made code or something um ready made products uh, cannot directly compete to the one who are creating it but still i mean these are some of the challenges 
that um, can be a, a, a big uh, that can be a, these are some of the big challenges that can come uh, uh, for for a platform like us in the future isn't there a way to adapt to that though to kind of compete back with no code to make it possible to do something that assists with no code in a way that is one of the thing that um, i mentioned um, uh, uh, I keep mentioning in uh, uh, my my conversations that uh, uh, we are we are creating and some NLP based plugins. So uh, it's it's more like um, it's it it will be a natural language programming based plugins uh, where all a developer has to do is they have to speak and that code will be visible right in front of him. So but that would be again a robust code uh, which would be which 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 is written by the developers which is written by experienced developers. And it won't be having those bugs. So that is some something that our team is working upon, uh, where um, people all people have to do they have to speak, and that code will be visible right, right in front of them, and they can work on some other task. So it could be much. Uh, I mean, that is one of the thing that team is working on. What's the difference between, or maybe there is no difference. Maybe they're they're complementary between something like a GitLab, a GitHub, you know. Uh, Jira, uh, or a, sorry, a Bitbucket, um, and BuildPen. GitLab, Bitbucket, they are repositories where people store their code. So if you want to utilize BuildPen, you have to connect these accounts with BuildPen, where BuildPen will check or BuildPen will take the access of all the repos that you're working upon, and it can start working upon. Jira is a work management tool uh, where you can connect it with BuildPan, we have given an option where you can connect it with BuildPan, Jira, Skype, Trello. These are some of the boards that you can connect with BuildPan. And once the latest build or once the latest update is available in the market, is available for the team to test it, uh, everyone knows that this is available and you can download it in your phone and test it. And then it is ready to go live on the platform. So these are some of the things that can be connected to BuildPan platform. That makes sense. Yeah, because I, I wasn't completely sure because there's some there's there's some companies that um, may be building something that are going to compete with those products, but I, I wasn't sh- quite sure uh, how you saw them. So it's good that you're um, partnering with them through integrations because I think there's a lot more value in, in doing that than trying to compete in that regard. Um, what do you think comes after the no code revolution i'm not sure in which direction that particular thing is going because right now uh, most of the no code softwares that i have seen they are more like a drag and drop tool where some things um, themes and uh, plugins and everything is available at one single platform people can drag and drop it and can make it Um, they are doing some continuous changes in those particular applications but uh, um, as i mentioned they are not um, very much um, I mean, they. I mean, they can be customized, but they uh, they cannot be uh, they cannot be compete uh, they cannot compete with a ready made application which developers create. The reason being, they can be customized. There are a lot of changes in particular application which needs to be made, which a developer can only make. So, uh, right now, on the basis of um, uh, research that I, I have done or the the things that I have read, it's more a, of a drag and dra- drop tool. Now, uh, there might be a possibility that they might be coming with uh, something uh, uh, which can be more customized, but um, I believe that uh, it won't be um, it won't be able to compete with a application which can be customized or which can be created by developers. I know with my company we had an issue with trying to get builds out on time, and I think a lot of companies probably have this issue where like you might go to download an app but you're like oh well the last time they updated it was like three months ago i'm not sure that i want to use this thing right i'm sure a lot of people a lot of end users maybe i don't know how many people look at the last time something was updated i know i do um that that's a decision that i make that that's something i take into consideration as to whether i want to download that application or not and uh so i remember that we were talking about how to get to a you, you know, two releases a month or maybe four releases a month, potentially. Um, but then I also see companies that are pushing releases every few days. You know, they, they might do eight or 10 or 12 a month. 
what have you found is the average uh, time between public pushes on your, your, your platform? I've been working um, on a lot of mobile applications. Um, so one of our client, um, uh, it's, it, they have a freelancing platform um, similar to Upwork. Um, and they push their application quite a fast. I mean, they, they update their application approximately three to four times in a month. Every week there is an update where they keep updating ourselves the, the latest data because it has a lot of freelancers at the back end. There are a lot of um, uh, project managers. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of clients which are there at the and There is also one uh, taxi application that uh, we are working with here in India. Uh, and they also update their application quite frequently. But there are also some applications uh, um, which which uh, they, they update their application sometime once or even twice in a month. So uh, it totally depends on the business model and also how frequently the, the, the changes that they are making in their application. So companies like games, uh, game, gamers, game applications, um, companies who are making games, companies who are creating mo music applications, they act frequently change or update their application. E-commerce applications, they frequently update their applications. But uh, an application, uh, something like uh, a mailbox or uh, someone who is um, creating a uh, poker application, a type of application, which, I mean, it, it's a game, it, it, it's a game, but... Uh, the client of that particular application, he rarely update his application. So, I mean, this is one of the problem that um, uh, we even, I mean, when I was working in some other company, when we had not started in BuildPan, uh, we usually struggle where, um, so that is also one of the reason that we started BuildPan because uh, developers are lot, um, I mean, they need to, they have to be dependent on various other people to create and to update the build, particular build, so that people can download it in the phone and test it. The client can download in phone and can test it. So there are multiple reasons. Uh, they need to be dependent on the QA team. Sometimes they need to be dependent on the other developer because some of the uh, part that he might be creating, which needs to be integrated and merged with his partner, and he might have not completed it. So we wanted a platform where everything is available, a developer, they don't need to be dependent on the QA or they don't need to be dependent on the project management or um, or, or sometimes there, I, as I mentioned that uh, people are not aware that how they need to find the UDID of specifically in case of iPhones. They don't need to uh, check that how can I find the UDID. So we, we created um, these lists, these uh, backlogs and we thought that let's try to solve these problems one by one and then we created BuildPan. So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, but uh, specifically, um, uh, um, I mean, answering your first part of your question, um, uh, specifically after COVID, uh, many people want to come online. There are a lot of businesses which are there online. There are a lot of um, uh, small businesses who have created the applications. So uh, they, they wanted the tech support to be uh, minimum so that they can maintain their application so applications uh, uh, which which are uh, which doesn't require much update like uh, i mean it again totally depends on the client and the volume of the business that uh, that particular client is what are some of the mistakes you see companies make once they've onboarded like where you've discovered their operations are messed up there there's something wrong and and maybe you have to go and help them to fix in order to make sure that they can use your product properly we have a proper onboarding team um which is there um which actually so usually it's it's couple of hours where i mean not even couple of hours it takes maximum half hour, hour for a people to understand the whole product because we have kept the dashboard to be pretty simple. We have kept only things which are needed for a developer to use. So uh, it usually takes um, 20 to 25 minutes for a developer to set up the whole thing and can start. he can start using the product. Uh, but we, we've kept a um, onboarding team which is there with them um, for almost uh, for almost all the time. 
if if they are facing some issues they are i mean available and resolve those issues so uh, one of the thing that we we've we've, um, we've seen constantly is uh, those bug report feature people um, find those bugs but they i mean they don't work on the suggestions that we provide to them and um, it's it's one of the usp that we tell it to the people that this is the usp and this is something that you've been paying money for i mean this is something that you've been paying money so you need to use that bug reports properly because um, we've seen that um, it's almost 80 to 90% accurate and you don't need the qa team and you don't need other people to find those read those um, code line by line you don't need the developers to read the code line by line we have given you a proper bug report you can check those bugs and rectify and can again push your code so that is some of the things that we have seen people usually struggle with um, there have been instances where we have seen that people don't connect their account i mean uh, uh, they want a rest api where they don't want to connect they don't want us to have the access of their full git um, as you mentioned it um, so that we can have the full access of their code they wanted something i mean if if a person is working on five projects he only want to give access of one single project but if you are if if we take access of github we have all the projects that he is working upon so we need to give him rest api that there is no issue you can connect your um you can connect your one single project through your laptop you don't need to give the access people are paying for the usp and not even using it they're paying for everything else. they're they're using everything else that's right how have you thought about how to change that because it sounds like when you tell them hey look this is the usp this is like why we made this product and they're not taking advantage of that how do you think about it like we should force them to do it or maybe the thing you thought was important people don't care about maybe you don't need to continue building it and then pivot away from that so for for solving this problem what we have done is uh, we've uh, um, uh we we created a email template that what all things while creating the application what all issues they faced and specifically bug reports so consider for an example if a developer was creating an application and his build failed five times and the number of bugs that have been occurred are these many number of bugs we send a uh, weekly update or once he completed that we we try to send um uh, um email to the whole team the whole project management team who's connected to that particular um account that this is this case this is what happens and this is what you've been paying for so initially um, uh, initially we were facing this issue but now i mean mostly people have accepted it and um, that particular template that the number of application the number issue, number of issues that have been faced um a total summary of um, what they have done on the product the number of the amount of time they have spent is sent to them um every day uh, even initially we started every day but now we have started that let's just do it once he completed its project or completes one single bit have you noticed that that changed the behavior at all it did because um, um what initially when we started it <laughs> uh, we we wanted lot of feedbacks from the person Um, uh, that how our product is performing and what what all things are actually making them to use our product more and more and um, in, initially when people were not noticing it uh, and when we when when we, when we try to speak to lot of people that um, they were initially using it only for creating the application and not for uh, finding bugs or finding issues then we spoke to people that this is also that can be done through build pan you have a platform uh, you have as particular tab where the issues are you can read those issues you can rectify those issues we kept that uh, we kept i mean we marked specifically uh, we we made some changes in the ui so that people can actually go into that particular tab and the response has been good so now people are using it effectively and since it's 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 our usp this is what uh, when we speak to new people or new new person that this is what our product is because Um, there are already existing lot of existing tools in the market but there is no single platform which is actually solving this problem where you can find bugs by yourself they are using any kind of a debugging tool but with buildpan it's internal made where people can find the bugs in the platform itself is there anything that we haven't talked about that you'd like to add 
raising funds initially can be difficult but you need to believe in a product if if you believe in your product that this is something which can disrupt the whole system which uh, this is something which can actually change the system then you need to believe in it uh, and some or other day you will get the funding so funding is important but it is not most important thing your product is important and if you are able to run the product by yourself you don't need the investors um, i believe that investors give you invest investment gives you an edge because um, apart from the money uh, they also connect you with various people they also open various doors so specifically speaking with uh, i mean specifically talking about sosv uh, when when they invested in us they they introduced to uh, a hell lot of clients a hell lot of prospects a hell lot of uh, mentors as well who actually help us there were some things which we were not doing correct and now we are doing correct but yeah so i mean that's that's all there's value in investors if they're the right people but if you don't need them don't go running for them true absolutely all right great so how can people follow up with you i've given my email id uh, it's webofthewari at com, and uh, i'm available on linkedin as well uh, so people can connect with me anytime and if if needed for any help most happy to thank you very much for your time and your energy i appreciate it by pav don't forget that entrepreneurship is a marathon not a sprint so take care of yourself every day and while this episode was recorded at the end of 2022 and will be republished in uh 2023 i guess i could say uh 2023 is going to be an incredible year I was looking at it in 2022 is this is going to be a really tough year, but the more I've thought about it and worked towards what I'm building, I feel more excited that this year is going to be a, an incredible year for growth opportunities. So don't lose your motivation for the fact that the rest of the world looks like it's falling apart because the reality is there is opportunity and you just have to seize it. And I know that you can do it just like I know that what I'm working on is going to succeed. So can yours. So thank you, Vibhav.